Hi, I'm Dirk Van Avel, orthopedic surgeon from the Melbourne Hip and Knee Group. Uh, I also work at Striker, teaching and training on Mako robotic surgery. And today I'm going to show you how I plan a Mako robotic knee replacement. A Mako total knee involves three stages. Firstly, looking at the CT landmarks, then planning your component positioning, and finally looking at your alignment philosophy. Before starting any Mako case, it's important to check your patient's name and details and check the side that you're operating on. I think it's also very important in knee replacements to look at the CT model and ensure that the landmarks as are plotted by your Mako product specialist are the same as you would uh, plot yourself. And that way you can ensure that the alignment and the angles that you're reading in the plan co correspond with what you think should be done for this patient. And that means checking both the uh, femoral and tibial landmarks. And one of the interesting ones is this rotational landmark uh, because traditionally we would line up the tibial base plate with the junction of the middle and lateral two-thirds of the tibial tubercle, but we're tending to internally rotate slightly from this to line, now line up with a uh, mark between the uh, posterior cruciate ligament uh, and the medial border of the tibial tubercle. Once you've checked your um, CT landmarks, it's also important to have a look at the resection landmarks. Uh, the striker staff are instructed to plot these adjacent to the thickest part of the femoral component, uh, which corresponds to where the pegs are distally and um, directly inferior to these on the posterior articular surface. These, however, are not always the most distal and most posterior points, and this can affect the readings that you get in your plan. Now it's time to watch part two, component planning.